started though. Um, there might be a little bit of a lag, but just bear with me. So I'm recording it and you'll also be able to watch it um, play back on YouTube. So I wanted to kind of chat a little bit about um, in-person sales and how it all works and how to price yourself and what that means specifically for the, um, the Intimate Documentarian. So there's a lot of humps that we need to get over, um, self-esteem issues that we need to get over, and uh, blocks that we need to be able to identify in order to move forward with doing something like in-person sales. And that's exactly what I want to go through today. So what does that mean for us, the birth photographer and intimate documentarian? Um, so what, what does that entail for us? That is, it's basically obviously a way to continue to sell ourselves and to continue to increase the average sale. It's um, a way for us to display our products and to choose our digital and print products with our clients. And it's an opportunity to learn exactly who your clients are and who your target market is. Um, we have so many intimate images that we automatically rule out um, selling, selling these. We, we automatically, we've already made the decision for our clients that our work is not worthy enough to be printed. Um, and I know that that sounds really harsh, but that's essentially what we're saying. So we've got portrait photographers and wedding photographers and, you know, all these other kinds of um, photographers out there that are printing their work. But we think that because we're photographing something intimate that our client isn't going to want to put that on the wall. And that is where we are very badly mistaken. So we see images like this and we think, who in the world is going to want to blow that up to a 30 by 40? So what is in-person sales? The obvious is that it's a meeting to sell your products. One of the immediate blocks that we come in contact with as a photographer is, I don't want my clients to think that I'm too salesy. And when back in 2014 when I switched to in-person sales that was one of the biggest things that I had to overcome with myself because it was I ran into self-esteem issues and self-confidence issues and money blocks and all kinds of other really in-depth things that I needed to work through and I won't go into all of that um, just simply because there's another another program that actually goes through all of that in depth um, that can help you work through that. So I don't want to give Angie's content away, but I don't want to be too salesy. And that was what I had to overcome. And when I realized that I am a salesperson, it all started to make sense. That was when I realized that I've sold my brand I've sold my brand over my competitor's brand. I've sold myself as an artist. They've booked with me. They've said that I'm worthy of documenting, um, of, of documenting their experience. So why am I not utilizing that to the fullest potential to support my family? So I don't know if you guys know, but my husband stays at home with the kids just it's just too difficult to have childcare and nannies and then you start working to pay for all of that those expenses I'm sure you understand so for us it just worked better for him to stay home which meant that I had to be the main breadwinner so once I realized that what I'm doing is a business and what I'm doing has to feed my five children and my husband and pay our house note and our car note and all of those things I then realized I'm a saleswoman and I need to sell the shit out of my stuff in order to pay the bills um, so once your client books you 
they're essentially throwing their money at you. So utilize that and sell them something. Sell them your products. Don't just sell them your service. So on an average for me, my regular sales are $22.50. Uh, and I say regular sales, that's what my birth photography starts with. That might be a different number for you. Um, a higher or lower, it doesn't matter because we're all in a different demographic. We all have different target markets. We all have different costs of doing business. Um, so after I sell my initial package uh, of $22.50, I make sure that I have my clients' images to them within seven days. And I know that sounds really, really difficult. And on a good day, it is <laughs> really difficult. But I find that when I present my clients' images to them within seven days, they're more likely to buy. So back in 2014, my average sale was $800. And um, I was doing maternity, birth, and newborn in massive bundles. And I was waiting until the end session to the newborn session before I presented their images to them from their maternity session and what I found was that no one wanted their maternity images they literally wanted about five pictures just to say oh look this is me pregnant whereas I found now that after every single session have an in-person sales session with them because they're emotionally attached to their images oh Lace I can't wait to see the pictures utilize that Use it for your benefit. They're already excited about what you've captured for them. Show it to them and sell them something. So once I figured that out, I started using it big time. So my goal was to have images edited and delivered within seven days. And it's because they're emotionally attached and they're more likely to spend more money. Um, so the other really important thing is all of my mamas and families and, and papas, they all have their, um, their birth package paid off by 37 weeks. So that is an expense that's already done and dusted and paid for. So I'm not having to go into the next session of the, the, the newborn documentary session and they're still paying off the birth session. So they're a little bit more reluctant to buy products because they still owe me money. Whereas if you walk in, you know, seven days post birth, and they've paid that off a month ago, their pockets aren't hurting anymore. And I've used that to go from eight hundred dollars back in twenty fourteen to now I'm making almost over four, right over four thousand um, dollars. And that's because the twenty two fifty is paid off by thirty seven weeks. And then I present them with their documentary newborn images at the same time, seven, seven days. So I aim to have their, so I photograph their birth and then I aim to go back to the house within 72 hours to take their newborn documentary images. And then I have the birth images and the newborn images edited within seven to 10 days. You have to have it edited ASAP, otherwise, the excitement loses its novelty. So remember we're working with the emotional um, draw to the experience. Now once I have all of that done um, and the births paid for, all they have to do is pay for the newborn images and that's a that's a whole new ball game because they're no longer hurting, I don't want to say hurting, but they're no longer worried about paying off that other package because it's paid for. So because of that, my sales jump from twenty two fifty to an extra fifteen hundred dollars, you know, two thousand dollars they'll spend sometimes two and a half thousand dollars they'll spend on their new family images. And that's because they've already paid off the first half of their package. So this is a completely separate thing for them. Which it it helps you make more money. So when when you are making that sales pitch, you can't even have it like you're trying to sell them something. Um, you want to have it so flawlessly um, just roll off your tongue flawlessly 
and I'll get to that in a minute, but some of the common objections before you can ever even book an in-person sale from yourself as the photographer is I don't have time. And I'm not a good salesperson. I'm gonna come back to these. I'm not a good salesperson. It seems too hard. Um, my time is limited. I have a bunch of kids. Uh, what if they don't buy anything because their images are too personal? And I don't know how to price my products. So the I don't have time thing, I found that when I was doing online galleries, I was spending more time uploading images and chasing up overdue galleries and exchanging way too many emails about my link is broken because, well, your galleries expired. And then in my contract, I, I said that I charged an admin fee for unarchiving galleries. And then when you send them an invoice for $50, they crack the shits, and then it's just frustrating for everybody. And I found that I was wasting so much time doing things online. And so once I figured out seven days postpartum, you book it in, and the client knows at that meeting we're placing orders, you're paying money, and it's over and done with. And you don't have to worry about chasing people up. So... Um, I'm not a good salesperson. That's that's going to have to be um, an intimate soul searching journey that you go on with yourself because um, we have to realize that we are running a business and we are in it to feed our families. And there's if if you don't think you're a good salesperson, you have some type of money block going on that you or we or us as a group need to figure out together. Um, what if they don't buy anything because their images are too personal? I'm going to get to that in a minute. And I don't know how to price my products. So when you're going through this whole process, it's important to understand that um, this is... Um, it's important to understand that it's a process, it's a learning experience, and it may work and it may not work. And if it doesn't work, that doesn't mean that you failed. It just means that you might need to tweak some things to make it work for you. Now, I will say that if you're doing in-person sales and you're trying to sell to someone who is not your target market, you're wasting your time. Um, if, if, if they're not your people, and you don't speak to them and they don't speak to you they're not gonna buy anything from you because they don't believe in you and you don't believe in them and that is a massive disconnect um, in in the whole process it's gonna throw everything off and you know when you when you see images it's important not just see images but it's important that when you're documenting that you have the whole story, I don't want to say the whole story pre-planned out, but you already have an idea of how you want to tell that story. And, you know, composition and angles and lighting and, and how you edit and post-processing, all of those things tie into how you're telling the story. So you and I can both have the same exact image and edit it and crop it in completely different ways, and it's going to tell a completely different story. So understanding your client's wishes for how they want to have it documented will give you a clear understanding of how you're going to approach photographing their experience. So if you um, are missing those little detail and in-between moments, you're not going to have a lot to put on the wall. So I am a sucker for photographing those in-between moments. And those are the, the moments that I find my clients want to put on the wall. The moments where, you know, baby's not crowning, but maybe shortly thereafter. Or um, the, the, the moment where the, the partner has their hand on, on the mother's shoulder. Or, you know, something inconspicuous. And it's not always a matter of blowing up that image to a 30 by 40. Sometimes that means making sure that you have the right products going to the right client. So moving along, getting into, you know, having that, that story planned out and, and premeditating everything and shooting to sell, 
prints, you're, you're, you're not going to have a hard time selling your products. So um, when you approach your client and say that your gallery is finished, that their gallery is finished, it should flow off your tongue so flawlessly that it isn't even a sales pitch. So I specifically have, in, it's embedded in my branding that I'm a documentarian. So before my clients ever even hire me and they view my website, they see pictures of my products. And then when they inquire with me, we talk about what's included in that package. And I do give um, a single, uh, two, two products that are included in my birth photography package. And, um, and we talk about those products and we talk about what that means and we talk about what that means to me as a documentarian and what that's going to mean to them as a client and, you know, archiving and, and, and how archival is more than just putting it on a USB, sticking it in the drawer and then being done with it. So my branding is very, very clear about how passionate I am about products. So they see it on my website and then when they book a meeting with me for um, for hiring me I bring a sample of all of my products so I load them up in a little suitcase and um, and I because I travel to them I just bring very small samples I'm talking like 8x8 eight eight square square prints as small as I could get my lab to print them and and map them for me and then um, so during our our prenatal consult, I pull those out whenever we're going through the packages and what they get. And then they see those samples and they get to look at it and touch it and feel it and smell it and imagine and daydream about that being their images. And that's just another way to get them really, really excited about their value for money. So that's um, the second time they've seen it. They've seen it on my website. They've seen it in the prenatal consult. And then um, we talk about it on the phone, and um, I have videos all over the place showing my products. And then at the in-person consult, I bring them again. And this time, now that they've seen their images, they're actually picturing their images on my sample images. And they'll and and I always have one of my clients say, "Oh, this image would look so beautiful in this frame," and that is what you want because now they're already sold, they're already emotionally attached, and now it's not a matter of if they buy, it's a matter of what they buy. So, um, so it's seven days, it's seven days after, seven to ten days, um, but for but for time's sake, we'll just say seven days. Um, it's seven days post-birth, and I ring my client, and I say, um, hi client, your images are ready, and I'm so excited to show them to you. How about I pop over to your house quickly and I'll just show you what your images could look like on your wall and then we can make some beautiful wall art for you. And of course, all they heard was my images already. And then you, their immediate response is, oh my God, I can't wait to see my images. What day are you free? Are you free this day? And now you've just pushed that back into their court. And then you go over to their house again and you bring out your samples again because it's it's been proven there's a statistic somewhere don't ask me where I saw it it's on the internet so it must be true no there really is a statistic out there that you have to see something at least three to four times before you buy it so like I said they've seen it on my website we talked about it on the phone they've seen it in the prenatal consult and now they're seeing it again at their in-person sales meeting that's four times that they've seen my products so they're going to buy something um, and and that's so having actual physical samples is so important if you don't have any samples you need to get some uh, it doesn't have to be over the top like super massive because unless they're coming to you having a 30 by 40 print on the wall isn't going to do anything for you so once you can say that little sales and I call that a sales pitch but it's not really but it kind of is it's it's quite sneaky um, once you have that done and you're talking to your ideal client, it's done. So I want you to sit down tonight or this morning, wherever you are in the world, 
and write down something that is inconspicuous that you can say to your clients that has an underlying tone in it that you're going to sell them something. It's going to be uncomfortable, it's going to be awkward, but I want you to pin it and then I want you to read it and then I want you to say it in the mirror and I want you to say it to your partner and I want you to talk to your children about it and your friends and your other birth photographer friends and your doula friends and your midwife friends and say it to yourself in your sleep over and over and over until when that day comes and it's time to set up that meeting it just flows out so naturally because you're more likely to buy from somebody who's confident so if I say to you oh um do you want to buy some products you're less likely to buy from me whereas if I say hey I've got some amazing products do you want to have a look at them look we'll just have a look and see what you think it there's such a difference in in your self-confidence and that is going back to money blocks and confidence but that's something that can that, that you can get over so once the meeting is set up I bring everything over um, and um, no so we've already been through all that we'll move on uh, so pricing pricing how do I price myself this is where it gets really interesting so pricing yourself I typically charge three times the amount of cost that sounds scary but listen so for example if I have an 11 by 14 print and it costs me $125 I'm gonna multiply that times three that's gonna give me $375 which I will then sell that print for $399 so here's another statistic that I don't know where I saw but I know I've seen it it's proven that when you're rounding a number um, people are more like you want to round it up or down to the nearest tenth so if it's if it's 375 you don't want to sell it for you know 400 even you want to sell it for 399 or 379 if you're more comfortable with 379 being closer to that then do that because the number three is in front and people don't look at the rest of the numbers they just look at the first number so if you got it at four hundred dollars you're less likely to sell that print whereas if it's at 379 it's it's almost like an optical illusion um, it it looks less expensive um, than what it actually is now when when you're doing times three, this is how I came up with the number three. I, Lacey Barrett, am buying this product. And then, I so I wanna buy the product, I wanna pay myself back for it, and then I wanna make what I sold for it. Then I wanna make what I sold it for. And if you're only charging times two, you're basically gonna break even because if you're only paying yourself back then you you've got no working capital so once once you start making a profit that's when you can start dividing your money up into places and and that and we'll get into that in a second too but if you're not comfortable with doing it times three do it times two and a half or 2.8 or 2.7 and whatever number you come with that you're comfortable with add 50 bucks to it because until you start charging a little bit out of your comfort zone, you're not going to make money. Um, and then once you raise it that $50 or that $20 or that $100 or that $1,000, whatever it is that you're comfortable, you're, if you raise it $50 and you go, oh, uh, I think I can live with that, then charge it. And if you go, oh my God, no, 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 no. Um, take it down a notch and then once so once you raise it that fifty dollars and you're in your super super confident charging that raise it another fifty dollars or a hundred or whatever it is that whatever increments that you're increasing by and keep raising it and once you get complacent with that pricing raise it again and raise it again and raise it again until um, you're actually at a place where you're making you're making money so <laughs> this is this is where it gets interesting again because I only offer what I'm actually gonna sell 
and I I use this this kind of um, ceramic hand painted tile because I've been to so many photographers who um, they give me a price sheet and they offer wood prints and they offer metal prints and they offer ceramic tiles and they offer this and I look at it and I go oh my god and you get so overwhelmed it's like when you go to a restaurant and they've got a hundred pages worth of food you don't know what you're gonna order and it takes you an hour to figure out what you're gonna order whereas if you get a menu with ten items you're gonna make your decision a lot quicker so you basically, and this is going to sound terrible, but you basically want to tell your client what they're buying. Um, you don't want to leave any room for confusion. You don't want to leave any, any room for um, indecisiveness or anything, anything like that because then you start prolonging the process. And the, the purpose of in-person sales is to get in, get it done, order it, get your payment, and you're done with it. So the more you offer, the harder it is to make that decision. Um, I like to go by the, the KISS method. Keep it simple, stupid. Now, when I'm choosing what I'm going to offer, when I'm keeping it simple, this is where knowing who your target market is going to help you incredibly. So I'm not going to sell a wooden print um, to my clients because I know that that's not my market. That doesn't mean that that's not your market, but I know for me that's not my market. Um, and all it's going to do is it's going to take up space and it's going to confuse them. So I'm not even going to offer it. Um, I only offer certain paper types because I know what my work looks like. I know my style. I know how it prints on that paper. And I'm not going to put a gorgeous muted you know, dark and moody image. I'm not going to put that on metallic paper because it's just not going to look good. So if you don't know what looks good on your on your images, um, I want you to order samples. So order a high gloss, order a matte, order a cotton rag, order a metallic, order a black and white, whatever it is that you want to experiment with and then lay them all out on the table and then pick out which one looks the best and if you edit consistently then you'll know that that paper will consistently never let you down. So I know for me a Kansan cotton rag matte paper will never let me down. Now I also only offer big prints so I don't offer 8x10s or 11x14s. My prints start at 20 by 24 Now this may be different for you. Please don't take me you know exact um, because like I said our businesses are very different but for me I I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible so when you start adding a million gazillion different sizes then they go oh well maybe I want this size no maybe I want that size so I basically I only carry big big and bigger <laughs> um, and that's because clients I, I still have people, my mom, my, my poor mom, I love you mom, my mom still thinks an 8x10 is a wall, it's a wall print. <laughs> and it's not. You put an 8x10 on the paper, I mean you put an 8x10 on the wall, guys, it's like that big and when you put it in perspective. So when I go to my in-person sales meetings, I always bring a tape measure. So that way, when they see my prices and go, oh my god, um, they say, well, I'm going to take the cheapest one. Um, a, a 20 by 24 and you go great where are you gonna put that and they go all oh, right there you take out that tape measure and you stick it you know on top of their their mantle and then they really get a picture of just how small a 20 by 24 is so it sounds big but when you pull out that tape measure and you put it in perspective for them they go oh oh right well if I'm gonna fill that wall then I need to fill it properly because I'm spending money to do this properly because I've hired a professional photographer to do this properly for me. So um, I also only sell my work um, framed, matted, and ready to hang. So I, that's something else is I, I see a lot of people that offer loose prints and then they offer frame prints and then you can get them in groupings and then you can do it like this and like this and that's just 
for me, a, another recipe for disaster because then they go, well, I'm just going to order the loose print and then I'll frame it myself. And then it never gets framed. And I have to say, I almost kind of feel offended when I know that my work isn't going to be put on the wall because you've just paid me upward of $2,000 to document something just to show up essentially. Um, and it hurts my feelings to know that my work is just going to be stuffed in a drawer on a USB, never to see the light of day again, maybe on birthdays, you know, on year one and year 18. Um, so I know that if I deliver a finished product, I know that it's going to go on the wall. And I know that it is a, it, it's a complete delivery for me. I, I, when I, when I was selling loose prints, I felt like my work wasn't done. And I really enjoy delivering a full, complete, whole product. And by selling it already printed and matted, ready to hang, to me, that is a complete product. And if you're doing in-person sales, don't deliver something that is not complete. Um, so, Yes, who, yeah, it's like, it's like Maccas, uh, Maccas, it's like McDonald's, no, nobody likes McDonald's, but they eat it because it's convenient, and it's the same thing, so you're, you're charging the prices that you're charging because you're charging them for, the, for convenience, they don't have to get just the mat, I mean, just the, the loose print, and then let it sit on the bench for, you know, 20 days or whatever, and then they end up, um, they end up not getting it ever printed or, um, after, sorry, <laughs> after, um, the six month old needs to eat. So what was I saying? Um, who, oh, so you deliver a loose print and then it sits on their counter and then you know, the convenience of it is that it's already done and it's matted and it's ready to hang. So the inconvenience part of that is that, you know, now you have to go buy a mat. Now you have to go buy a frame. Then you have to buy the tape and then you have to put it in and then you've got to make sure it's level and it's straight. And so you're selling the convenience of something already completely finished and, and ready to hang. So I want you to have a look at um, at my pricing and you'll see it's I think it's pretty simple I don't know it may not be <laughs> but you can see I literally I only offer four products um, I offer a gator foam I offer a classic framed uh, Italian framed print I offer a shadow box print and then I offer a fine art floating frame print everything comes already nailed with a mount ready to hang. So whenever I have somebody try and hassle me and say, oh, I just want the print, I just tell them, sorry, I only deliver complete products and when I deliver a loose print, I'm not delivering the whole experience. And then they either take it or leave it, um, which 99% of them take it. This is really good too. So when I make a sale, I then take that and I divide it into three sections. I pay myself, I pay the business, and then I put money into the business savings account. So that way on a rainy day, if your car needs um, servicing, if your camera's broken, if you want to upgrade, you've got you know a third of that money in savings and you're ahead. So now you've got working capital because you're charging what you're, you're charging more than double. You're not just breaking even anymore. Is everybody still tracking? It's a lot, but it's so good. So, um, I want everyone to make videos because I'm really into this whole video thing and I think it's a great way to learn and experience and to um, become comfortable with yourself. Uh, every, not everybody is comfortable with video so if you can make a video just a quick short one 20 to 20 20 to 30 seconds long um, recording your sales pitch and put it up in the group uh, I think that'd be awesome 
So then you can share why you chose that as your pitch for your clients to buy from you. And then I want you to schedule your first in-person sale and tell us about it. Um, it may not be an instantaneous like get rich quick scheme. I know mine wasn't. Mine took some tweaks and uh, you know it, this product isn't working so I switch it out for something else and that's not working so I'm going to do something else. Um, that's not my target market so I'm going to change my marketing <laughs> style and then once you tweak it, so try that for a month and then once you tweak it, um, let us know. Let us know what you did to get where you're going. So I want you to use this as a foundation though to evolve into an in-person sale money making machine. So please um, let me know what you think and um, how, how you can use this information to, um, to just, just do it. Just schedule one. Alright guys, I will see you soon. Thank you. Bye.